All right, welcome back. This is our fourth lesson on simplifying polynomial expressions, and today we'll be working on page 337 to 338 of the textbook. Now, reminding you, simplify does not mean to make simple, okay? Simplify means to what? Simplify means to add, subtract. Remember that addition is the same as subtraction. Multiply and divide. Okay, multiply, simplify means to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now, in the last three videos, we focused primarily on multiplication division. And remember that multiplication division refer to laws of exponents. If I say something is a multiplication rule, it also means that it is a division rule. Okay? Division, multiplication, same thing. If something applies to addition, it also applies to subtraction. Now, today, we're going to focus not on multiplication division. We're going to be focusing primarily on addition subtraction. And then we will look at how these two relate. Now, I said this in the first video. I'm going to say it again. The goal or, or the, the, in order for you to be successful in this lesson and all the lessons the rest of this year, you must be able to keep straight the rules for multiplication and the rules for addition. Now, remember this. When you multiply, nothing has to match and everything changes. Multiplication is easy. Multiplication is like glue. Things just glue together. They don't have to match. They just glue together and everything changes. Addition makes our lives difficult. In fact, you're going to think today that addition is simple. Okay, but as we go on, you're going to start to see that addition makes our lives difficult. When you add, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. Okay, so that's the key. When you add, something has to match, and what matches doesn't change. Let me show you an example. So if I write on the board, 3x multiplied by 3x. Now, I said when you multiply, things do not have to match, but I threw two matching terms up here. Okay, when you multiply, nothing has to match. And everything changes, so we just glue it together. 3 times 3 is 9. x times x gives x squared. Everything changes. You just glue it all together. Okay. Now, when you add, when you add, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. Okay. This is a completely different process. We look for something that matches. We see that x matches x. x will not change. Okay. We write what matches because what matches doesn't change, and we add what's in front. 3 plus 3 gives. 6. So we end up with 6x. Now let me show you a different example. What if I write 2x multiplied by 3y? Okay, we can multiply because when we multiply, things do not have to match. 2x times 3y, we just glue it all together. We get what? 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Glue the x and the y together, we get 6xy. But if I write 2x plus 3y, you are stuck. You are stuck because when you add, something must match. Now you notice we're looking, well, I should say this, we're looking for a variable match, okay, exact match on the variables. Does x match y? No. So there is nothing that you can do here. There is nothing you can do here. This is already simplified, okay? This is already simplified. There is nothing you can do because nothing matches. Uh, when you add, something must match, and what matches doesn't change, okay? So this is already simplified. Now, let's look at some examples. Off the bottom of the 6-1 handout sheet, we're going to do one example from the bottom, we're looking at, uh, well, maybe two examples from the bottom of the sheet. First, uh, number 19. Number 19 says, uh, let's see, number 19 says 3n squared uh, plus 1, add to this quantity 8n squared minus 8. Now, notice we have a binomial and a binomial, and what's separating the two? There's addition separating the two. So now we are adding. There's no multiplication here. This is addition. We're adding a binomial to a binomial. Now when you add, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. So we look for matching terms. So we look at our n squared term. Underline your n squared. Okay, does n squared match any other term? Yes, we have an n squared here. Remember when you add, what matches doesn't change. So write your n squared. Okay, the n squared will not change, and we add what's in front. Students make the mistake of doing this. They just got done multiplying, they want to write n to the fourth. No, we are not adding exponents here. No, when adding polynomials, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. You have an n squared, and add what's in front. 3 plus 8. 3 plus 8 gives what? 11 n squared. Now cross them out. You're done with these two terms. Now we add our numbers. We have a positive 1, a negative 8. Now, the rule is if the signs are the same, you add. If the signs are different, you subtract. Remember that addition and subtraction are the same thing. Okay, so positive 1, negative 8. Since the signs are different, subtract. 
Take the larger number, subtract the smaller. 8 minus 1 is 7. Take the sign of the larger, so we get a negative 7. Circle this. Notice that a binomial add to a binomial gives what? A binomial. Is this always the case? No. Let's see in a minute. Let's look at number 20. Number 20 says quantity 6w minus 11w squared subtract quantity 4 plus 7w squared. Now say this. Here we have a binomial. Subtract what? A binomial. Notice subtraction between. We don't like to subtract. We like to add. So we're going to change this to addition. We're going to change the subtraction to addition. Remember that subtraction and addition are the same thing. So you just distribute the negative. This is negative 1 multiplied by the quantity. So we're going to distribute the negative, change the signs, and then we're going to change this sign to addition. So we're going to make the, basically change all the signs of the terms that follow the, the subtraction. Make the positive 4 negative, and make the positive 7w negative, and change the subtraction to addition. This makes it easier and less error prone. So I want you to always change your signs and change this to addition. Now, we look for things that match. Before we go any further, let me talk to you guys about degree. If I write 8x to the third minus 7x squared plus 4x minus 2, degree is the exponent. So we have to identify degree. Degree is the exponent. So if I circle the exponent here, what is the degree? We have 1, 2, 3, 4 products or 4 terms. Uh, what is the degree of this first term? The degree of the first term is 3. So we did the degree is 3. This is third degree. Circle the exponent here. This is what? This is second degree. Okay, the exponent of x. Now it's unwritten. The exponent of x is a 1. So we say that this is what? We say that this is first degree. So we have third degree, second degree, first degree. What's the degree of the last? Well, the last is what? x to the 0. Okay, remember that anything to the 0 power, 7 to the 0 power is what? 1. So we don't actually write x to the 0 power. We're going to assume to be 1. I will talk more about this in the next lesson. Okay, x to the 0 power is 1, so we don't write it. So we say that the degree of the constant term, the x to the 0 is unwritten. So we say that the degree of the constant term is 0. So we have what? Third degree, second degree, first degree, and 0 degree. We like to line things up in order of degree. Largest degree to smallest degree. So we look here. When adding, I want you to look for your largest degree. Which one is your largest degree? Largest exponent. Hopefully you say w squared. Okay, so we have a w squared term. We have a w squared term. We have a second degree. We have second degree, second degree. We have a first degree and a zero degree. Start with your largest degree. Now, when we add, when we add, what matches doesn't change. So will w squared change? No. Write your w squared. This does not change. And now add what's in front. We have negative 11, negative 7. Add these together. Since the signs are the same, you add. 11 plus 7 is 18. And since they're both negative, we get negative 18. Cross these out. Now, uh, question on your W term. Does anything match your first degree W term? No. So we just write. This is a positive 6W. So write plus 6W, plus 6W, and cross it out. Nothing combines with it. And lastly, we have a minus 4. So put your minus 4 on the end. And you're done. Okay, so we have, notice, a binomial. Add to this a binomial. What did we get? We got a trinomial. So sometimes things get, you know, we start with just two terms and two terms. And we end up adding these and we get a three-term trinomial. Okay, or three products. All right, so it isn't always the case that if you add a binomial and a binomial, you get a binomial. Okay, now look up here. Here we have what? A trinomial subtract what? A trinomial. We don't like to subtract, we like to add, so I want you to distribute the negative. Change all of the signs of the terms that follow the negative that are inside parentheses. So we're going to change the positive 3 to what? Negative 3. We're going to change the positive x to negative x, and we're going to change the negative 1 to positive 1, and change this to add. When you add, it's easier and less error prone. Now, starting with our largest degree, here we have what? Second degree. Here we have second degree. Okay, what matches doesn't change when we're adding, so we have x squared. Write what matches. Okay, x squared matches. Write this. x squared will not change. Now, add what's in front. We have a positive 1. We have a negative 3. Now, since the signs, since the signs are different, subtract. Take the 3, subtract the 1. We get a 2. Take the sign of the larger, which is what? Negative. Okay, reminding you, there is an unwritten 1 in front of x squared. 3 minus 1 gives 2. Take the sign of the larger, which is negative. Cross these terms out. Now, next, we look at our first degree terms. Okay, so we have x to the first, x to the first. 
Uh, does x match x? Yes. So write what matches. What matches doesn't change. And add what's in front. We have a negative 5 and a negative 1. Okay, so we, since the signs are the same, we add. 5 plus 1 is what? 6. Since both are negative, we have a negative 6. And the negative becomes your subtraction sign. Cross it out. Okay, so one thing at a time. Positive 2, positive 1. Since the signs are the same, add them up. We get a positive 3. And we are done. So trinomial, add trinomial. We ended up with a trinomial. Not always the case. Sometimes when you add two trinomials, you get a binomial or a monomial. So it's not always the case that the number of terms when you add will match on the result. Now, again, we have subtraction. Remember, subtraction changes to what? Subtraction needs to change to addition. So we're going to distribute the negative. All right, make the positive 4 negative. Make the negative 2 positive and changes to addition. And we look for matching terms. Okay, so we start with our second degree or largest degree, b squared b squared. This is second degree, second degree. Okay, what matches doesn't change. So write your b squared and add what's in front. 7 plus negative 4. Since the signs are different, subtract. 7 minus 4 is what? 3. Take the sign of the larger. Since the larger is positive, the 7 is the larger number. It's positive. This is a positive 3b squared. Cross these out. Now, go to your next term. First degree. So we have b to the first power. Okay, so we look here. Does anything match the b term? No. There are no other b terms. So just bring down the positive 6b and cross it out. Now, numbers. We have a negative 7 and a positive 2. Since the signs are different, subtract. 7 minus 2 gives what? 5. And take the sign of the larger, which is what? Negative. And we end up with 3b squared plus 6b minus 5 when we are done. Okay, so hopefully you've seen concepts of subtraction. Addition, I'm sorry, addition and subtraction are completely different. Different process than multiplication division. Okay, with multiplication division, you just glue things together. With addition and subtraction, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. Okay, we're stuck. We're stuck here because we're adding, and nothing matches. Nothing matches b squared, nothing matches b, and nothing matches our number. We are stuck, and we're done. This is simplified. Okay, now, okay, now that we've looked at addition and subtraction independently, uh, let's look at where these two relate. When does, okay, we're going to look at multiplication and addition coming together now. And there is one property that said this is the key to unlocking the mysteries of this class. The key to making algebra, or the key for algebra to make sense, okay? The key to unlocking the mysteries of this class is to understand this property, distributive property. What property relates multiplication to addition? Okay, so distributive property is going to relate the two. What happens when multiplication meets addition? Okay, so we're looking at A multiplied by quantity B plus C. Here, everything is coming together. So we're relating multiplication rules with addition rules. Notice, we have multiplication here, and multiplication is meeting addition. What property applies when multiplication meets addition? Distributive property applies. So the multiplication distributes over the addition. So we have A times B gives what? We're gluing these together. A times B gives AB. And then A times C gives what? AC. So what property applies when multiplication meets addition? We call this distributive property. So this, this is what you're going to have to pay very close attention to, relating the two together. Now, I say it like this. What is star multiplied by triangle plus Mars? Okay, what is star? It does not matter. Whenever multiplication meets addition, whenever multiplication meets addition, what property applies? It does not matter what you're looking at. When multiplication meets addition, what property applies? Distributive property applies. So we do star triangle. We have star triangle or multiply, glue star and triangle together because we're multiplying. Star triangle plus what? Star Mars. Okay, so when, we, uh, when multiplication meets addition, no matter what you're looking at, distributive property applies. This is just kind of very abstract. So we're looking here. Notice we have a monomial, 2A multiplied by a binomial, 4b plus 5. Notice that multiplication is meeting what? Multiplication is meeting addition. What property applies when multiplication meets addition? Distributive property. Now we're going back to, okay, first we are multiplying. First we're multiplying, then we're adding. Okay, so we're looking at 2a multiplied by 4b. This is what you did yesterday or in the previous lessons. 2a multiplied by 4b. This was what? What we did in the previous lessons with just multiplication division. Notice 2a, 4b, when you multiply these, there's no addition. Just glue it all together. 2 times 4 is what? 8. And glue the a and the b together, putting the variables in alphabetical order, we get 8ab. Okay, so notice 
we're first using our multiplication division rules. Then after we multiply and divide, we will use our addition and subtraction rules. So we're looking at multiplication first. 2a times 4b gives what? 2 times 4 gives 8. And a times b, just glue it together, we get ab. So we get the term 8ab. Now, uh, now take the 2a and multiply by the second term, 5. So 2a times 5 gives what? 2a times 5, just looking again. 2a multiplied by 5. Okay, we're just gluing it together. Things do not have to match. 2 times 5 is what? 10. And we put the a on the end, so we get 10a. So 2a times 5 is what? Positive 10a. And we are done multiplying. Now we're asking the question, okay, so we're done multiplying. We're asking the question now, okay, we're adding. Does something match? When you add, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. You say, yes, A matches A, but hold on. No, we're looking for exact match on the variables, exact match. We have here what? A, B. Here we have an A, so we're looking for exact match. Does A, B match A? No, then you are done. So circle this. This is simplifying. This is done. There's nothing more that you can do. Now, down here, notice multiplication meaning what? Multiplication meaning addition. What property applies when multiplication meets addition? Distributive property. We say that the multiplication distributes over what? The addition. So we say 4x multiplied by 2x squared. We do 4 times 2 and get what? 8. Okay, now what is x times x squared? Reminding you again, let's look at this as an independent problem like in the previous lessons. 4x times 2x squared. In the previous lessons when I gave you this, 4x times 2x squared... We do the 4 times the 2, we get an 8. What is 1x multiplied by 2 more x's? We get x to the 3rd. We are adding exponents. We have x to the 1st, x squared. Remember, what is 1x times 2 more x's? We get a total of what? 3x's multiplied together. So you are adding exponents here. 4 times 2 gives 8. x times x squared, 1x times 2 more x's is x to the 3rd. Now, take the 4x and now multiply by the y. Okay, again, glue it together. Things do not have to match. 4x multiplied by y gives what? 4xy. Now that we're done multiplying, we now look to addition. Okay, so when we add, something must match. Does x cubed match xy? No, so we are done. Okay, so when you add, something must match. You're done here. Let's look at an example that after we, <coughs> after we multiply, we get matching terms. This is the last example. And the previous lesson, or in the next lesson, we're going to go more in depth with this. Okay, so we're looking at. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Page 338. Number 35. Okay, so number 35 says 5c multiplied by quantity 2c squared minus 3c plus 4 uh, plus. 2c multiplied by quantity 7c minus 8. So let's look at this example. Now, first off, we notice multiplication is meaning what? Multiplication is meaning addition. Let's name this. What is 5c called? Okay, 5c is just a product. We call this what? A monomial. 5c is a monomial, and what's in parentheses is a trinomial. So you see a monomial multiplied by what? Multiplied by a trinomial. Now, here we have what? Monomial 2c multiplied by binomial 7c minus 8. What property applies when multiplication meets addition? Does not matter what you're looking at. When multiplication meets addition, what property applies? Distributive property. Same thing here. When multiplication meets addition, what property applies? This is distributive property. Now, we're going to multiply first, then we will add. So we're going to start with 5c times 2c squared. Glue it together. 5 times 2 gives what? 10. And c times c squared, remember we are adding the exponents c to the first times c squared, we add 1 plus 2 and get c to the third. Now, take the 5c and multiply by the negative 3c. 5 times negative 3, do the numbers first. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Okay, and 1c times 1c is c squared. Okay, remember when you multiply, you're adding exponents. 5c times 4 gives what? 5c times 4, we get 20, what? 20c. Now, go to the next. 2c times 7c, 2 times 7, we get what? Positive 14. C times C is C squared, and now 2C times negative 8 gives, gives 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and we have a C on the end. Now, are we done multiplying? Yes, we are done multiplying. Now what are we doing? We are adding. Okay, when we add, what we have to find things that match. So when we add, something must match. What matches doesn't change. So we look, starting with largest degree, we have what? Third degree, 
second degree, first degree, second degree, and first degree. We look for matching terms. Okay, starting with largest degree. Since c cubed is largest degree, start here. Always put your largest degree term first. Remember, degree is the exponent. So nothing matches our c cubed term, so we're done with the c cubed term. Write 10 c cubed and cross it out. Now, looking at our next, we have second degree. Does anything match our second degree term? Yes. We have c squared and c squared. Okay, what matches won't change because we're adding, so write your c squared and add what's in front. Since this is a negative 15 and a positive 14, reminder when the signs are different, we subtract. Okay, so 15 minus 14 gives what? 15 minus 14 gives a 1. Do we write 1 c squared? No. So just ignore the 1. Okay, so we write, as I'll just do this. Write the 1 and then take the sign of the larger. The larger is what? Larger is negative. So we get negative 1 c squared. This looks ugly. We don't write the 1. So we just write this as what? We write this as negative c squared and the 1 is assumed. So cross these out. And now go to your last. Okay, so we have c to the first, c to the first. This is first degree, first degree. Underline your c. What matches doesn't change because we're adding. So put your c at 20 and negative 16. Since the signs are different, we subtract. 20 minus 16 gives what? A 4 and take the sign of the larger. Since the larger is positive, we have a positive 4. And that concludes this lesson. So today you've seen uh, rules of addition and subtraction. And we've started to relate multiplication and division to addition and subtraction. And what property relates multiplication to addition? What property relates multiplication to addition? Hopefully you say distributive property relates. What happens when, when multiplication meets addition? When multiplication meets addition, multiplication distributes over addition. It's not the other way around, okay? Multiplication distributes over addition. All right, that concludes this lesson. Great.